living in significant times, man. This is biblical right. time. What's been on top of my mind is the feast of trumpets. The feast right. of trumpets. So we have our politics, right? We have a guy, you know, who's who's leading, you know, his party, and his name is Trump. <laughs> like a trumpet, it's a bold sound. It's a resonate. What he says is coming out of him is bold and resonating. It's loud. It's clear. It's concise. And, yeah, that's, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, haven't you know, about that. I haven't thought about that before. Yeah. At a pivotal time in American history. You know, the thing about social media is it, it, what, I've, what I've sadly discovered is even though it could be such a wonderful tool to, like, discuss ideas and think about things, so many people just don't have the ability as, as people to do that. They get, they get so they, bent out of shape and they... They fly off the handle. It's just like so obviously a place that we could unify. It's not the way that people look at it right now. At least right now. Maybe these, you know, these young kids, man, these young, this next generation, they are. Yeah, yeah, that's hopeful. They're going to change the game, but unfortunately, it's in a bad, you know, it's in a good way, but it's in a bad way. Meaning like, like my friend, for example, when I went over his house, man, he was showing me this guy that was selling shoes, right? Now, what he do, he's an artist. He took, he take boots, like Timberland boots. And he he um he decorated them to make them look like a game flag, right? And he wow. sold them to gangsters, right? Now I'm gonna tell you one thing. This guy not only did he does the artwork, he produced his own videos to promote it. He creates a character. He gets into the character <laughs> and used the language, scripting and everything. I thought this was this guy was. I thought it was a young thug who had a talent who was selling shoes. But then he showed me another video where he was selling a completely different type of sneaker design and took on a completely type of, different type of role with character. I said, man, these young people today, you know, oh, that's awesome. they, that's they, uh, awesome. they're, they're, they're clever, they're talented, they're smart, they're gifted, but every day when they listen to music, they're listening to yeah. trap music. Yeah. Rap music has not even became trap music. You see what I'm saying? So it's, too, it's so bad now. Let me give you some hope, man. Some of the stuff I'm seeing on your channel, like some of the spoken word artists, I mean, I listen, when you post those artists, I always listen to them. And some of those guys are incredibly talented. Like yeah. some of those like spoken word artists, like in my opinion, the, the great tragedy of black culture right now is that those people are not being heard because the ability to say that stuff, that kind of thing, right off yeah. the cuff, and the other thing that I'm impressed by, um, Rondell, is the so some of those spoken word guys where they're like freestyling, so they get this thought and then they're freestyling. It's like they're pulling from all these different things to make their analogies. Like they're pulling from like literature, they're pulling from like society, they're pulling from like pop culture. I'm listening to this stuff and I'm like, how is this not mainstream stuff? Because and that's just, the same it's thing. They're giving they're giving people candy and they're not giving them the fruit. You see what I'm saying? That's why Dr. Ben Carlson said you have to look at the fruit basket. You know what I mean? And people really didn't say They heard fruitcake. They heard, I am a fruitcake. That's what they heard. He was emphasizing on fruit, like the Bible says. They're only producing on the in Main Street media, purposely pumping out a certain type of genre of music. I agree. I agree. And they're, they're concealing, like the old hip-hop. If you look, listen to how hip-hop started, it was social political. It was right. aspirational, you know what I mean? It was it was, it, it was empowering to the right people. Exactly. Now now it's just drug music, right? It's literally You know, what, you know what, man? I'm with you on the conspiracy theory on this. I'm seriously mm -hmm. with you because there's really no other explanation for it. The part I don't understand about it is how some of these guys that have already made it and have the money, there were these rappers, and they were like old school rappers. They were like right at the, right at like the early 90s, you know, when it really started popping. And they were like, they were calling out like all these modern guys, and they were like, "This is ridiculous." You know, you guys aren't even saying anything. This isn't even art anymore. Going after that, what the point you just made? And I think the only way that it turns around is if people in the industry say enough is enough. Well, what they have to do, and they're starting to do it. People like Jay Z with Tadal now. What they, you got to create the infrastructure. If the industry, if a certain group of people own. The, the microphones, the production studios, the, the marketing, uh, and distribution platforms. You see what I'm saying? If, right. You know, then they're the ones that have the, and also the finance. 
So they're the one that actually have the power. The person has, who's an artist, only all they have right. is basically that's a product. True. They got a product. You see what I'm saying? Now, a lot of these guys, and they're uneducated, too. See, wealth is not a acquisition of, you know, a lot of money, because wealth is going to always equal to what your mental health is. If you're a poor person and you're certainly given a lot of money, what you're going to do is all the aspirations poor people want it. I want it to travel. I want a jet. I want the nicest cars on the planet. You've never been rich before. Right, so you're going to spend right. all your money on consumables, expensive liquors. That is right on the money. That's wealth is education. It's not It's not just giving me a bunch of money. And I was watching an a, a, a interview with Memphis Bleak, who he, he blew up like a couple of years ago. You know, right now he's on his way to jail, you know, because of taxes, right? When he was doing the, the interview, it sounded like he was like in pain, but he was trying to be tough. But I mean, I don't know if it was a physical pain or a pain in his heart. I don't know, but it felt like he got shot. It sounded like he had got shot or something. You know what I mean? He just had a lot yeah. of pain in his voice, but he was trying to hide it like he was, you know. But the yeah. point I'm trying to say is he was talking about how life happened to him so fast. And he got rich and he was 21 with millions of dollars. And then a couple years later, you know, legal fees, uh, a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. All these yeah, yeah, you know, this, and stuff. That makes sense. You know. That makes perfect yeah. sense, man. You, you don't have the infrastructure as as a person to be able to make good decisions. I know that some like the NFL and the NBA now have these programs. When they give you your first contract, they also hire you like an accountant and like a lawyer. You know, all of a sudden you went from like seventeen thousand dollars a year to like eighteen million dollars a year. How do you know about how to handle that? And that's everybody. I mean I wouldn't know how to handle that. I would need like guidance and I would need somebody to be looking out for me. The, and yeah. the right guidance too. Let me ask you a question that I've been wondering about. Uh, this is a so this is a constant point of disagreement we have on Facebook and I mm -hmm. actually am really curious about your take on it. Mm -hmm. So you post a lot of stuff that flawed black culture. Which on yeah. one hand I get, you know, and I and you've explained why you do it, and I and I, I just want you to know I intellectually understand that, like I do mm -hmm. get that. So I don't think the media has done that certainly in our lifetime, probably way yeah. before our lifetime. Yeah. And I understand too the psychological toll it takes on the culture by not seeing yourself in a in a proper yes. state of accomplishment. So that's yes. not lost on me. And I feel yes. like sometimes when I make these comments, it sounds like I don't understand that. But see, what, what I think is dangerous about that and the flip side of that coin, which I'm really opposed to, and not just with black culture, but with every fractionalized aspect of American culture, because we are a melting pot, and that's part of our beauty, but it's also part of our uh, potential demise, too. Yes. So here's yes. the interesting thing. So every time I see you do that, my preference is always that you, that you phrase that accomplishment in the, in the, in the larger lens of humanity – and here's the reason I think that. Now, I get that this is not exactly the same thing. I mean, white people weren't subject to slavery, so on and so forth. But if you yeah. were like, every time, if you were like, see your white brother or sister, you know, he did this or he did that. My, the yeah. problem I would, uh, the problem that I would, would be sensitive to with that is this is going to make white people see their identity and their worth yeah. in not just an aspect of themselves. And I'm not saying that that should be completely ignored. But that, yeah. that this will limit their their view of themselves. So my mm -hmm. my dream of America yeah. is that when your children see Steve Jobs, even though technically he's like half Arab, half white. I mean, who who even knows what this guy's ethnicity is? But the point is, is that he was able to see. He was able to go from a not rich kid to yeah. a huge influencer in the world. Not because he focused on his skin color, but because he focused on America's opportunity for him. Yeah. And, and I'm a I know, believer I, in this. I know that that's your your perspective. And so I don't think it's wrong. What am I no, no, you it's not that you're not seeing it. It's just that that's not the world it's it's not really the world we're in. You know, what I'm saying is I, I am like when you post you never see anything hateful, you know, towards anybody. I do promote a lot of Black intellectual thought because a lot of people were posting ignorance. And also people believe that we have not contributed, both black and white. Uh, you know, we, we brought into this concept that we have, we're lazy and that we're just ghetto. No, we have just 
just wonderful minds that have contributed uh, I mean, significant to this to, to America. That's now, when crazy. you turn on TV, I when you turn on TV, you will very rarely see it, maybe through Black History Month. And that's the reason why people can use race against us. You see what I'm saying? But if you know, if, 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 or if, if a, my, you know, a lot of my uh, other brothers, uh, white you know, friends, uh, were from military, right? And, right. you know, I understand that because I, I went to school in the country. I went to school with everything, city school, country school, suburban schools. So I knew how, I know how to get along with pretty much everybody, military experience. So when the country, you know, when the country guys that, that grew up in the, you know what I'm saying, in the country, in the woods, and, you know, they, I understand their perspective is not going to be like a city dweller. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was just yeah. writing about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, what they take pride in, what they value is, that, you know, they value working in the mud. You know what I mean? They value right. having a gun, you know what I mean? And not just one gun, a whole, you know, gun display. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I mean, so, so, so I understand, you know, that so a lot of times what we see, the differences we see are not even racial. They're cultural. You see yeah, what I'm saying? I mean, that's you know, you go to the west side, you see white boy, boy, white boys that look just like the black boys on the east side. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, that's 100 percent right. That's 100 percent so, right. But so what you're saying is correct, but it's correct in a perfect world. I mean, what you're telling me is your purpose of it is not to um, to to like isolate black culture, but rather to remind them of something that they're not getting. And I understand yes. that. I really a lot of it is I'm just learning it myself. See, I'm a student, so I'm not using social media just for social. I follow friends who offer me value. I'm learning it, too. So when I pump yeah. in and I oh, learn, yeah. learn, you know, you know this, this thing, you know, I think it would be a disservice. And, and I purposely, and I'm going to tell you this, too, my Brock, I, it's a lot that I don't post because I don't want to flood my page with, Black this, black this, black this, black this. Although right, I know it's, right. it's very powerful. I mean, it's kind of shameful to make your point, even though, being you don't see this the exact same way. To make your point, it's kind of shocking how often I read that, and I had no idea about that. Like, that's that's actually a strong – I think that's a strong point yeah. in, in the direction of what you're doing. But all I'm saying is, so if the dream – now, you're saying this is an ideal world, and I have to admit that's true. Okay, so so everything you're saying about the the contribution of black culture being like unbelievably bountiful is without a doubt. You are you are, you accept like you kind of you're like a student too, man. You're a student of life too. I mean, I am, yeah, man. You have the same kind of curiosity. But the yeah, thing is, I've never I've never had the assumption that, that the the assumption here is that black culture is somehow separate from me. But but when I when I actually when I listen to some of this stuff, like when I listen to uh, Miles Davis or when I listen to Louis Armstrong or when I listen to Ray Charles, these, these guys are like pillars to everything that we hear on the radio. I mean, if you study American history, it's not even that black culture has contributed. It's that black culture has literally created. And that's just one thing. That's not everything. But my point yeah. is the way I look at all those creations is with a sense of American pride. Yeah. Like but uh, also, but pride. bro. Yeah. Right. Let me let me also say that you know we also we we do contribute. A lot of African American people have contributed in the uh, music industry and in the um, you know the entertainment industry industries. But you know there were significant contributions from the medical field, for example. Yeah. The oh, first, the first, in the, I can't deny that in the past there has been a concerted effort to omit. And just quite frankly, just like leave out history that is not what the predominant Judeo-Christian white culture wanted to hear. I mean, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. But my only point, Rundell, is we gotta we gotta as a people, and this is every culture, every color, every every tribe, every nation. We gotta make a decision about what we want to be in the future. Yeah. And I think I think we gotta decide that we gotta be one. Now I grant you that that's idealistic. All the great men that I read in history that changed the world and made a difference, Gandhi, MLK, all these guys, they didn't choose to do that because I think what they thought, Rundell, was those little problems, like you're saying, the, the, the uh, textbook not being, not being on the up and up, they, yeah. they believed that if they got the human heart right and if, yeah. they, if they got people to realize that we're, we're like threads in a tapestry. It's not the red threads or the yellow threads, but it's the human thread that's moving forward the world. 
Oh, and absolutely. If you get people to see that, all these other things that we're trying to fix. Now, granted, I mean, I say that, and then I got my own things that I like that I like get upset about or frustrated about. So everybody has this thing. Yeah. But the re- but the reason you and I see this is differently is not because we disagree on the the details because we don't. But it's just it's the end well, game. And what is this doing to us? And and I agree with you a hundred percent. Like um like like more um. Uh, Morgan Freeman, he said, he said, you know, how do we stop this race thing? And he says, well, you know, stop talking about it. And I won't, I won't call refer to you as a white man. And I ask that you won't refer to me as a black man. And we just be American, you know, basically, you know what I mean? And that is a perfect world. And we can't live that way. Me and you talking right now, this is our reality. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And it's a reality to a lot of people, man, and on different levels, in, in, in the hood, in the suburb, in business, in, in religion. It's, it's everywhere. This is a reality that's going on in our nation. It's the beauty. It's the beauty. It's what I love about this country is the, is the diversity. And, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of it, but it all, to me, starts at the diversity. But the, the history of our country will always be used politically. So when someone is trying to gain political gain, they're going to use the tools and mechanisms that are at their disposal. Right. And I, don't racism, dis- I don't disagree with that. That's true. And, That's true. And, and this is not just dem- this is not just Republican. This is this is Democrat and Republican. It's like good oh, cop like and anybody, bad cop. Anybody who wants power. Anybody right. wants power, right. they're, going to, they're going to say what the. Uh, the, the the demographic or whatever they're trying to appeal to. Right, right, and right. And so, so, you know, and Trump, he's a mastermind. He's been in the game for, oh, he's older. But he looks, he's way older than he looks. Humanity. He knows psychology. He knows sales. He knows, you yeah, know, the yeah, art of the does. deal. I mean, he does. You know? Does. And, and so, number one thing you learn in sales, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> right? That's right. That's you know right. what I mean? So you yeah. pick your, diff- you pick which your target audience, and you just he he brand he branded every single person that he he defeated yeah. so far. Right, Every one right. of you, That's Lion right. Ted. My mom was going around calling Ted Lion Ted. Can you believe that? I said, <laughs> Mom, this man branded Ted. That's so funny. That's you know what I'm saying? It was brilliant, though. It was brilliant to do that. He knows the American like lowest common denominator. You know, he just knows that. It's, well, it's crazy the, how good he is at that. The genius is, is he said how he would do it, <laughs> and then did it. So, oh yeah, that, that's yeah. the genius. The result of it. The result, man, is actually scary. That's why I said the, the feast of Trump. As you look it up, it, it, it's directly associated with the rapture. And if you're looking at the rapture, rapture, a lot of people will be disappearing. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of people think that people will be popping out of the cars and popping out of the sideways and going up into heaven. And, you know, that's fine. But in my perspective, is God going to be making a way for his people to leave the situation? Just like Lot leaving out of out of Saddam and right, Gomorrah. Right, was, right. Lot, it, was, it, was, it was a debate between, I think it was Abraham and God. He was saying, well, if I find ten people. When you spare the city, he was like, look, God was like, if I, if you find, they went all the way down the number chain to, to if you find one. Oh, it, was like, it, was one. Like, no, it was so, it was so pathetic. It was like, yeah, that. yeah. Was and you notice, and you notice in the, in the moral 